Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at command line arguments. You're going to learn how to use GitOps to parse input data. You're going to learn quite a bit with this video. Let's learn how to process the command line. In our sample program, I'm writing a Unix utility called tail. Tail will get the last n lines of a file. In the short option, notice I say minus f minus n. In the long option, I say minus minus file name with or without the equal sign and number. So in this program, we're going to learn how to parse these input arguments to use in our application. Notice in the command line, I'm going to say minus F, a name of a file, minus N, and then 50. This is what that command line will look like. I will get it into my program. ARGV sub zero is the name of my program. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start with one and skip to the end and put those in my argument list. We will then send that list to process command line. Let's meet on line 56. Looking at the program, notice it goes all the way out to command line PY. See, that's the name of my program that's running. I don't need that to process arguments. Now my argument list contains the minus F, the name of that file, minus N and 50. I'll be sending that as input to process command line. Notice we're inside of process command line. My arg list looks like a list. It contains four elements. Going to come down. Notice that I'm inside of a try except. So we're going to try to do this. If we get an error, we will execute the exception. So here we go. My short option is F colon N colon. Now the colons represent this F is required. This N is required. And we will run this twice and we will turn this off and see what happens here. Now my long option is file name with the equal or number with the equal. Let's run this. Notice that I'll get out my op list and I'm going to be sending in my input parameters, F10. And let's look at our op list. Notice that we have a list of tuples. Minus F with our file name, minus N with 50. Then I will come down into a for loop and then I will like get out my minus F, which is the file name, and my minus N, which is my number of rows. Let's do this. So I got the file name. I'm going to get the rows. I'm going to, 50 is a string. I want to convert that to a number. So now number of rows is a integer. I'm now going to test to see if that file name exists. And once it exists, I can copy the temp file name into file to use and our number of rows. And guess what? We're working. The program has worked successfully. You just saw the perfect world. Now I'm going to show you eight examples where things can go right and wrong. This is where you really learn. Let us look at some short option. Get op, get op. Notice here I have my arc list. Minus F and a file name. Minus N and a number. Number of lines I want. Notice on my short option I say F required and required. Notice those are my two flags. Then I'm going to get ops and then if there's an error we'll stop there or I'll meet you on line 66. Let's do it. Notice no errors and let's see the output. Well the output is perfect. We have a list of two tuples. The first tuple is our file. Second one is our number of lines. In this example, I just switched the options N and then F. Both are required. Remember in our first example, I said that, you know, it was F and then N. Let's run this. Continue. No errors. And notice that we parsed correctly as well. So the order of our short options is not a factor. In example two, notice my list still looks minus F, file name, minus N number, but in short option two, the file name is required, but the count is not. Let's see if we get an error on 120 or we get through to 123. Let's do this. No error, and let's go check the output. For example two, notice that we have a file name, but for the number, look, no value. 
Example 3, notice that we F, file name, number 50. Notice now I'm saying F, not required, N required. Short option 3. Let's see if there's error outs or we get to line 153. Let's do it. Notice no error. Let's go check our output. Ooh, example number 3. That doesn't look like a list I can use. So this right here is no good. In example 3b, you can see I just switched the orders. Remember, in our last example, I said n is required, f is not. So I moved n required to the front, then file. Notice those are my two switches. Let's see if it error outs or we get to 175. Let's do this. Notice no error, but look, once again, bad data, 3b. In our fourth example, we have our list. Notice my options, F not required, N not required. I do my get op, get op parsing. I'll meet you on line 203 if there's an error, or 207 if it's okay. Notice this does not error out when we at least include. However, our output is unusable. In this example, our arc list minus F file name minus N50, but notice my short options, I'm looking for A and B. Let's see if this gets through or gets an error on line 63. Ooh, we get an error. Let's see what happens. Option F is not recognized. In our next example, minus F file name minus N50, notice in my short option, I'm only saying F is required. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna parse. And then notice I get an error message. Let's see what that error message is. Exactly. Option N not recognized. Let us look at several examples using the long option. Notice my input minus minus file name and then we have our file name and then minus minus number. I'll be using the long option. File name required number required. Let's see if it error outs or gets us to line 63. Let's do this. Notice I got to 63. Let's check our output. And notice example one, output looks good. We have a list, two tuples, file name, number. In this example, the only thing we did is we swapped number file name. In the previous example, it was file name number. Let's do this. I'll see you on line 95 if there's an error, or 98 if all things are good. Let's do this. Everything is good. Let's check the output. And notice that it parsed correctly. File name has a file name, number has a number. Example two for long option is probably the most important demo I have in this video. Notice here that I have file name, number. I'm coming in and I'm saying file name required, number not required. Let's see if this gets through. I'll put a, a breakpoint on if it's good and I have a breakpoint if it's bad. Let's run this and see what happens. Notice I got an exception and the exception error, let's see what prints out here. It says number must not have an argument. That is very disturbing. Let us go through to our next example and we use the short option for the same thing. Notice that I'm saying file name required. Here I'm saying file name required and then number not required. Let's see what happens in this example. I'll meet you on line either 135 or 138. Let's do this. Notice I went through, I did not get an exception, and then my output is notice I got a file name, but for the value of n, the number, it's missing. So they do behave differently before you put this in a production environment, make sure you test your inputs thoroughly. There you have it team. Managing the command line arguments with GitOp is all done. Now you need to determine, can you use this or not? Now for my particular app, Tail, which has several command line arguments, I'm not gonna be able to use this. I have users that are so creative, they'll make all kinds of errors and it's just easier to maybe do a different route. So there you have it. I appreciate your support and I'll see you back in my next video. Have a great week.